students welcome to sunil tutorial on sunil devani and today we will be doing this chapter called as electrostatics let's start now what do we mean by electric lines of force what are electric lines of force electric lines of force are defined as the path along which a free positive charge will move when it is placed in an electric field so if i have a free positive charge suppose if there is an electric field here so this is a positive charge now this is going to give out invisible lines of force right so if i have a free positive charge the path that would be traced by a free positive charge in the presence of an electric field is called as electric line of force okay so electric line of force electric line of force is defined as is defined as the path along which a free positive charge positive charge moves when placed in an electric field fine okay. next <coughs> now suppose the lines of force are drawn from every point on the boundary of a very small area of a charged conductor these lines of force enclose a tube and such tube is called as tube of force suppose if i have a very small area if i have lines of force drawn from every point on this small area if i have lines of force i just explain to you what are lines of force if i have lines of force drawn from every point on the boundary of a very small area on the boundary from every point of the boundary if i have lines of force coming out then uh you would have these lines would be enclosed in a tube and such a tube would, would be called as tube of force right so you have suppose yeah so sure. see i have say a conductor suppose if i have a conductor if i have a conductor if i have lines of force coming out from every point on the boundary right all these lines of force could be enclosed in a tube and such a tube would be called as tube of force instead of line of force it would be a tube of force what is tube of force tube of force is uh, if you have from the boundary if you have lines of force coming out they will all be enclosed in a particular area and that area would be called as tube of force right so suppose that the lines of force are drawn from every point are drawn from every point on the boundary on the boundary of a very small area of a charged conductor then the lines of force enclose a tube and then the lines of force enclose a tube such a tube is called as tube of force such a tube is called as tube of force fine Now, let's try to find out an equation for the tube of force. Right? Now, let's assume that the number of lines of force originating from a unit positive charge in air or vacuum is say one upon epsilon zero, where epsilon zero I'm going to assume as permittivity of free space. Right? Now, I can say that let us assume. 
let's assume that the lines of force lines of force are originating from a unit positive charge from a unit positive charge originating from a unit positive charge placed in vacuum placed in air or vacuum is say 1 upon epsilon 0 where epsilon 0 is permittivity of air permittivity of air means the number of lines of force that the medium would allow here the medium is air permittivity of air now if the unit charge is placed in a medium of permittivity epsilon if the charge is placed in if the charge is placed in permittivity of epsilon then the lines of force obviously would be one upon epsilon lines of force would be one upon epsilon fine now the number of cube yeah the now see every medium would allow certain number of lines of force. How many lines of force would be allowed through a medium is called as the permittivity of medium. Can we get this thing here? Now the number of cubes of force. Sir, uh, epsilon. Ah, epsilon. Right? Now the number of cubes of force normally passing through unit area of a sphere is given by the formula number of cubes of force, number of cubes of force passing normally passing normally through unit area unit area of a sphere passing through unit area of a sphere is 1 upon 4 pi epsilon into Q upon R square, you learn this in 11th standard, right? Where 1 upon 4 pi epsilon is going to be the permittivity of free space, and this is going Q is the charge, R is the distance at which you are going to measure this. Now, I can say that, but Q upon 4 pi epsilon R square is electric intensity. 1 Q upon 4 pi epsilon R square is nothing but the intensity of electric field at a distance R from a charge Q. Where E is the intensity of electric field. R is the distance from the charge. Right? and Q is the charge, right? In that case, I can say that electric intensity at any point in the electric field is equal to the cubes of force normally passing through unit area drawn, drawn around the electric field. Now, if you see this, the number of cubes of force and intensity of electric field have the same formula. Therefore, I can say that electric intensity is equal to the number of cubes of force electric intensity is equal to the number of cubes of force passing normally passing normally through unit area a unit area drawn around the point so now we know what is how many cubes of force would be exist right 
Now, the number of cubes of force passing normally through a given area in an electric field is also called as electric flux through the area. But these are only your 11 standard basics. The number of cubes of force, number of cubes of force, number of cubes of force passing normally. passing normally through a given area passing normally through a given area in an electric field it is also called as electric flux through the area it is called electric flux through the area Right? Thus, I can say that electric flux per unit area is also the flux density. Also, electric flux per unit area is equal to flux density. Right? Therefore, I can say that, see, Number of tubes of force passing through a given area is called as electric flux. Number of tubes of force is also equal to electric intensity. Therefore, I can say that electric intensity is the same as flux density. Guys, once more. Electric flux per unit area is flux density. Electric flux per unit area is number of tubes of force normally passing through uh, a given area. And number of tubes of force normally passing through a given area is also equal to electric intensity. Therefore, I can say that electric intensity is the same as flux density. Electric intensity is the same as flux density. Right? Now, in order to find out the number of tubes originating from a charge, uh, in order that the number of tubes originating from a charge should remain same irrespective of the nature of the medium, the charge is placed in a tube of induction. See, generally what would happen is if I place a charge in a medium, the medium, the number of lines that could originate from the charge would depend upon the medium. But I want to make sure that same number of lines should originate from the charge. So instead of placing it in a medium, I'm going to place it in a sphere, right? And that where the medium in that, that inside that sphere would al always remain same. Such a medium would be called as a tube of induction. Fine, do you understand what is tube of induction? I'm just getting the basics clear before we actually start with the chapter. I can say that in order that the number of tubes, the number of tubes originating, number of tubes originating from the charge should remain constant. From the charge should remain. Constant. The number of tubes originating from the charge should remain constant, irrespective of the nature of the medium. Irrespective of the nature of medium. Irrespective of the nature of medium, the charge is now placed. Uh, is because the nature of the medium in which the charge is placed the concept of tube of induction is introduced the concept of tube of induction is introduced right now what is is Introduce. Right? If I were to place a charge in a medium, you would get different number of 
tubes of force depending upon the medium. But for a particular charge, I want the same number of tubes of force. Hence, you come up with another concept called as tubes of induction. Now, only one tube of force would originate from a unit positive charge. According to this concept, from a unit positive charge, you would have only one tube of force originating. And such tube of force that would originate from a unit positive charge is called as tube of induction. Right? So, according to this concept, to this concept, only one tube of force would originate only one tube of force would originate uh, would originate from a unit positive charge unit positive charge and this tube such a tube of force is called as tube of induction such a tube of force is called as tube of induction. Thus, what would be a tube of induction? Tube of induction would be the tube of force, only one tube of force that would be originating from a unit positive charge. Right? Now, the number of tubes of induction that normally pass through a given area around the point in an electric field is called as normal electric induction at a point. Now this is a very important concept. The number of tubes of induction how many tubes of induction pass normally through unit area pass normally to unit area drawn around a point around a point in an in the electric field electric field only tubes of induction that means only tubes of force would pass through a given area in an electric field is called is called normal electric induction at that point normal electric induction at that point right therefore i can say that the normal electric induction normal electric induction at a distance r from a charge q see suppose if i draw an area the number of tubes of induction passing through unit area drawn around in an electric field let's assume that i have this area say ds right this is my electric intensity moving out, right? Let's assume that this angle is theta. In that case, I can say that normal electric induction at a distance r from a charge q will be q upon 4 pi r square, which will be nothing but charge is directly proportional to the charge is inversely proportional to the square of the distance right this should be multiplied by epsilon so epsilon q upon 4 pi epsilon r square right but q upon 4 pi epsilon r square we already said is electric intensity so this is going to be equal to epsilon e right this is called as total number of tubes of induction the total number of tubes of induction the total number of tubes of induction passing normally through a given surface area 
passing normally through a given area, through a given surface is called as total normal electric induction. Total normal electric induction. Henceforth, I will write this as T N E I, total normal electric induction. Right? Now, I've already shown you the diagram that if you have area ds perpendicular to the direction of the electric intensity, ds is perpendicular to direction of electric intensity, then I can say that the total normal electric induction, total normal electric induction through ds, see, through unit area is epsilon e, so through area ds will be nothing but epsilon e into ds, through unit area the normal electric induction is epsilon e, through unit area it is epsilon e. So through area ds should be epsilon e into ds, right? Now, now if the normal, if normal drawn to area ds, if normal drawn to area ds makes an angle of theta with the direction of electric intensity, I hope you all know what is the meaning of normal. The perpendicular to the, to the tangent is called as normal. Takes an angle of theta with the direction of electric intensity. Right? Then the component of the electric intensity in the direction of normal. Then the component of electric intensity in the direction of normal will be equal to E cos theta right in the diagram this is going to be my E cos theta right that is going to be my component of electric intensity in the direction of normal and hence I can say that total normal electric induction through the area is going to be through the area ds is going to be nothing but epsilon it is not the electric intensity that is passing through the normal but the electric intensity passing through normal is e cos theta into ds right so this is the total normal electric induction passing through area ds but the body is not made up of just one small area ds it is made up of a larger area so what will be the total normal electric induction passing through the total area it will be the integral of this right do we get this thing here therefore i can say that if the total surface area if the total surface area if the total surface area is divided into a number of small elements ds, the surface area is divided into number of small elements number of small elements such as ds then the total normal electric induction over the whole surface total normal electric induction over the whole surface will be integral of epsilon e cos theta ds right so this is your basics using this basics now i'm going to prove gauss's theorem so in gauss's theorem when i write total normal electric induction you should know what i mean right so can you explain how you got this, this see, 
I have a charge here, so electric intensity is always going to move outwards. This epsilon. Q upon 4 pi epsilon r square. Q upon 4 pi epsilon r square. The left side is capital E, electric intensity. So I substituted Q upon 4 pi epsilon r square with capital E. This epsilon remains as it is into capital E. Right? Next. Let's see what is Gauss's theorem. Now, let's first derive it and you'll state the theorem. Right? Let's consider that your positive charge Q situated at a point. Let's assume I have a positive charge Q situated at point O. Right? Now, let's inside a closed surface of any shape. Inside a closed surface of any shape. Right? Let Ts be the small area around the point P at a distance of R from the charge. Right? DS, this is your DS. Let DS be the small area around point P at a distance of R from charge Q. This distance is say R at a distance of R right from point O. Okay, so let's just write this one down first. Cons let charge plus Q be situated at point O. Let charge plus Q be situated at point O inside a closed surface of any shape inside a closed surface of any shape right let ds be a small area around point p Let's assume that this is the given point P. Here, this point is P. Around point P at a distance of R from O. Right? Now, in that case, I can say that the normal electric induction over area DS, therefore, I can say that the normal electric induction over area ds is going to be epsilon e cos theta ds right do we get this we have already done this so it is going to be epsilon e cos theta ds right now in that case i can therefore say that the electric intensity e The electric intensity E can be given by E is nothing but Q upon 4 pi epsilon R square. That's my formula for electric intensity, right? So in that case, I can say that the therefore I can say that the normal electric induction over area ds is epsilon substitute the value of e as q upon 4 pi epsilon r square cos theta into ds i'm substituting the value in which case epsilon epsilon gets cancelled so you will get this answer as q ds cos theta upon 4 pi r square q ds cos theta upon 4 pi r square right this can be written as q upon 4 pi ds cos theta for r square now ds the area cos theta the angle around it upon the distance that will tell you what will be the angle that will be made 
the solid angle that is going to be subtended by charge Q at ds this ds cos theta guys see if I show it to you here only this was my area at ds this is point P this is Q plus Q at point O so this will tell me what is this solid angle three dimensional solid angle that will be subtended by point P at O this angle is going to be say D omega fine do you get this in here so I can therefore say that what ds cos theta upon r square is d omega what is d omega it is where d omega is the solid angle is the solid angle subtended is the solid angle subtended uh, at the charge q by ds therefore now I can say that the normal electric induction over area ds is going to be nothing but q upon 4 pi d omega right now if this is the normal electric induction over the area ds the body is made up of multiple such small areas ds Therefore, the total normal in electric induction over the entire body will be nothing but the integral of this. Therefore, I can say that the total normal electric induction due to charge Q due to charge Q over the entire closed surface over the entire closed surface is going to be nothing but P and E I is going to be nothing but integral of Q upon 4 pi d omega whatever is constant comes outside the integral sign so Q upon 4 pi integral of d omega now d omega is the solid d omega is the solid angle that is subtended d omega is the solid angle that is subtended at by the area ds at point o now the solid angle subtended guys if i want to if i want three dimension in two dimensions the total angle that is subtended by a circle is going to be equal to 360 degree right and then i need c solid angle 360 degree but this is two dimension I want solid angle that means I want three dimension on the other side also 360 degree so the three dimensional angle that will be subtended will be 360 plus 360 720 degree that means the addition of all the small angles that are going to be subtended at point O will be 720 degree right do we understand this so I can say but but integral of d omega is 720 degree 720 degree is nothing but 4 pi 360 degree is 2 pi so 720 degree will be 4 pi therefore I can say that therefore I can say that the total normal electric induction the total normal electric induction is equal to q upon 4 pi and instead of writing integral of d omega I can write 4 pi so 4 pi 4 pi gets cancelled and total normal electric induction is going to be equal to q and that is what is Gauss's theorem Gauss's theorem says that for any closed surface with any number of charges situated at any position inside it the total normal electric induction the total normal electric induction over the closed surface area is the algebraic sum of the electric charges that are present in the closed surface we just write this down I can say therefore Gauss's theorem 
states. Morse's theorem states that for a closed surface, for a closed surface of any shape with any number of charges situated inside it, any number of charges situated in any position inside it, any position inside it, the total normal electric induction, the total normal electric induction over the closed surface area, over the closed surface area is equal to the algebraic sum is equal to the algebraic sum of the electric charges electric charges enclosed by that surface find the other thing here so that means if Q1, Q2, Q3 are, are the charges situated inside a closed surface. Are charges situated inside a closed surface? Then I can say that total normal electric induction is equal to Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 plus which is nothing but sigma Q sum of all the charges that are enclosed in it right so do we understand Gauss's theorem so inside a closed surface the total normal electric induction is equal to the sum of all the charges that are enclosed inside it and we get the same here next let's see one application of Gauss's theorem what will be the electric intensity at a point near a charged sphere? Electric intensity at a point near a charged sphere. Electric intensity at a point near a charged sphere. First of all, I need a charged sphere. Let's assume that this is my charge sphere over the center of the charge sphere, right? Now, if over the center of the charge sphere, the charge will always be on the outer surface. Faraday's experiment says that charge will always remain on the outer surface. So the entire charge of the charge sphere will be on the outer surface. So you will say, let us assume that charge Q, let plus Q charge be given charge be given to a conducting sphere let's assume that plus Q is the charge given to a conducting sphere now this charge will be uniformly distributed over the surface area of the sphere this charge is uniformly distributed this charge is uniformly distributed over the surface of the sphere right now I want to find out the electric intensity at a distance at a point uh, outside the sphere right now in order to do that what I need to do is if I want to find the electric intensity, say let's assume at point B, which is at a distance of R from the center of the sphere. I want to find out what will be the electric intensity at this point. Now, for this what we do is, we will draw a Gaussian surface because Gauss's theorem says that the total normal electric induction will be the same over the entire surface. So let's draw a Gaussian surface. 
let's assume that there is an imaginary sphere passing through point P, uh, passing through point B, right? Now uh, I'll say that in order to find out the inten electric intensity, in order to find the electric intensity. In order to find the electric intensity at any point, at any point outside this, in, at any point outside this closed sphere, sphere, consider another sphere B of radius R. Consider another sphere B of radius R. Another sphere B of radius R in the form of an imaginary Gaussian surface. In the form of imaginary Gaussian surface. Fine? Now, that means the intensity at every point on sphere B is going to be same. I can say therefore the intensity at every point of sphere B will be same. That means if I take any point, I will get the same intensity. Moreover, it is going to be perpendicular to the surface because lines of force are going to move outward from here and they are going to move outwards. That means the electric intensity is going to be perpendicular to the surface at that given point. Right? I can say that moreover, the electric intensity is perpendicular to the surface right now in that case the total normal electric induction over sphere B total normal electric induction over sphere B is going to be given by the formula integral of epsilon E cos theta ds we had already derived this that the formula for total normal electric induction is nothing but epsilon E cos theta ds. Now, here what is going to be my value of theta? Since the lines of force are perpendicular to the surface, that means I can say that for every element ds on the sphere, for every element ds on the sphere theta is going to be 90 degree because the lines of force are perpendicular to the surface if theta is 90 then cos theta will be nothing but cos 90 cos of 90 is going to be nothing but uh, sorry is going to be 0 on 90 the lines of force are perpendicular to the surface right so in that case I can therefore say that for every element of ds it is going to be there is going to be no angle that is going to be formed it is neither twisting to the right nor to the left it is going to pass straight therefore theta is going to be 0 so cos theta will be cos of 0 cos of 0 is 1 so in which case therefore I can say that my total normal electric induction is integral of epsilon E cos theta is 1 ds right now whatever is constant comes out so this is going to be epsilon E is out integral of ds integral of all the small areas what are you drawing you are drawing a sphere what will be the integral of all small areas of the sphere it will be the total surface area of the sphere I can say but integral of ds is going to be nothing but 4 pi r square that is your surface area of the sphere surface area of 
atmosphere. Therefore, I can say that total normal electric induction is epsilon e 4 pi r square. But by Gauss's theorem, I can say that total normal electric induction is equal to the charge. Therefore, I can say that Q is epsilon e 4 pi r square in which case I can therefore say that E is Q upon 4 pi epsilon r square that will be the electric intensity outside a charge sphere it will be equal to Q upon 4 pi r square now if the charge is situated at the center of the sphere we will get the same expression for intensity at any point at a distance of r from the sphere, right? You could also write this this way. I can also say that E can also be written as Q upon 4 pi epsilon 0 k r square where epsilon is equal to epsilon 0 k permittivity of medium is permittivity of free space into constant right so that is going to be your electric intensity outside a charge conducting sphere right okay we'll stop this here for the day thank you very much